Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Well, guys, we just wanted to let you guys know, in case you haven't checked out playlists, check out the Natural Health and Wellness play playlist over here. This is on EE Arts. We do have one on both channels, Evolutionary and EE Arts. And I just want to call your attention. A lot of you guys did watch this interview that we did with naturopath Rosemary DeJuric and got a lot of real positive feedback uh, where people said that was just so loaded with great information that they could use. So do check out the playlist. We need it in these times. Believe me, we are under attack. And make sure you are subscribed to both videos. Again, unique videos are reptilians among us. Look at they're fleeing because the reptilians are coming. They're fleeing. <laughs> right? Yeah, so to speak. Absolutely. So let's listen to JB and see what's on his mind. Is could that is there anything ever on his mind? I mean, seriously, what could possibly be on his mind? Oh shoot! You know what? Hang one second. Oh, I need to put the volume on. Volume. No, because we I was making this video, and the power went out. And the power went out right when I was reading a certain article, which we're, we're going to bring up for the next video that goes up on evolutionary. It was really, really odd, honestly, that the power went out right when I was reading about a tragedy um, that's happened way too much in this world. No, I'm not talking about GUNSs. There's a lot going on uh, right now, but the idea we're going to be able to, you know, click switch bring down the cost of gasoline is not likely in the near term, nor is it with regard to food. There's a lot going on uh, right now, but the idea we're going to be able to, you know, click a switch, bring down the cost of gasoline is not likely in the near term, nor is it with regard to food. So I think what he's trying to say is get used to inflation and the food situation's not going to get any better. That sounds like it to me, yep. Sounds like that's what he's trying to say. Here we see U.S. policymakers misjudged inflation threat till it was too late. Is that what really happened? Some of us would beg to defer and say, you know, it's all about a great R-E-S-E-T. Mm -hmm. And again, order out of chaos. It's the motto. It's the motto. As you see, a lot of people are really catching on to this. As you see this tweet, Gavin Newsom's California is shutting off water to farmers to save fish. Water to farmers is now below growing levels. It's going to cause devastation to their 2022 crops, as well as all related industries. Yeah. Uh, does what we see make any sense? I think a lot of people are waking up and saying no. Doesn't seem to make any sense at all. Unless you're really not trying to help the farmers unless you're really not trying to tame inflation hap you know and help just the average person right and you know that's just something that's not on their agenda this is really really sad i mean this is this is epic this is epic and the first 50 percent of california's water flows out to the Pacific for fish and environmental purposes, something the Public Policy Institute of California verified in 2019. Water in California is shared across three main sectors. Statewide average water use is roughly 50% environmental, 40% agricultural, 10% urban. So, you know, when you guys are looking at that, recognize, y and, and there is going to be water rationing. It, it, it is already going into effect, and it's probably going to continue to get worse. And again, it boggles my mind that, you know, you have Washington, the state of Washington, in some areas, or maybe it's all areas, where it's illegal to gather rainwater. Talk about just insanity, what is wrong with these people? I know. Are they going to go get the create a new rainwater police force? You can't put a bucket out under the gutter and catch rainfall rainwater. It's 
insanity unless there's just a bigger purpose underway. We've seen so many of these farms, and this, this was a poultry farm that supplies eggs to major supermarkets. And this is in Howard Lake, Minnesota. And this supplies the nation's largest supermarkets with 3 million eggs a day. And they had a devastating fire. Tens of thousands of chickens killed. Up to a couple hundred thousand. That's huge. And yet it's just a drop in the bucket with what we're seeing all across the planet in regards to the attack on the food supply. The food supply is under attack. People are waking up and recognizing this. I went to the store yesterday and there was a, a real sweet, nice little old lady, probably 80, you know, right behind me. And she just made the comment, I can't believe the prices. They just keep going up and up and up. She said, you know, never in my life did I think I'd see this date. And she said, I think we're all going to end up starving. Yeah, I mean, it's really time to get that garden going. Yes. And over in L.A., we see over eight bucks a gallon. Get ready for double digits. And some stations have already switched over to make the machines able to do double digits. Remember those crazy CONS piracy theorists warning about collateral damage of lockdowns? The V passports, supply chain issues, technocrat technocratic power grabs, high inflation, digital ID, CBDCs, and social credit systems. Well, those CONS piracy theorists have become realists. Absolutely. And isn't it funny? See a reply that isn't helping to the to contributing to the conversation because you're in on it, Twitter. Because you're part of the problem. You know, this is what we're recognizing. They're in on it. All, all these major corporations are in on it. And that's why you got the New York Times saying, do you know somebody that believes in CONS piracy theories? Well, we want to hear about it. Share, share what you know. What's your email? What's your name? Where do you live? Who's involved? And so what theories are they interested in? And... Did the internet help them deepen their understanding or involvement with this particular theory? In other words, did the wikis work? And if they came to reconsider the beliefs, how did that happen so we could do more? How did this experience change the person involved or your relationship with them? You know, in NAZI Germany, there was a lot of people that told on other people. There was a lot of people that hid people, that their lives were in danger. Or they were starving or freezing to death. And they took them in and hid them in basements and cellars and root cellars and in all different places in order to save their lives. And there were some that would tell on them to get an extra loaf of bread, get a pat on the back, maybe a little cash. And that's just horrible. But that's the reality. And you know what really disturbs me is knowing that so many people have... Um, a system that they believe is going to come through they think it's going to help them and all of these people are being their names and numbers and addresses it's all just being collected for another entity to come along and just scoop them up and I really wish things were not that way and I do wish that there was somebody coming to help us but no I mean it's it's got to be us and we need to be very careful about you know, who we're giving our information to. Who are we handing our power over to? We need to be keeping it for ourselves and our family. Who does number one and number two really work for? Well, it's not me and you. Right. That's for sure. Absolutely not. And that's just part of why we need to look to alternatives. 28 medicinal herbs you need to have in your garden. And absolutely, you know, one of the things we got to get across, and when you look to these big um, prepper places that sell food, please read the label. Because there's stuff in many of these. Yeah, sure, it might last 25 years in that bucket. But again, it's going to have stuff in there that's going to cause inflammation in your body. It's going to cause toxicity problems, you know, and, and yes, when we're starving, we're going to get pretty desperate. When we're really, really, truly hungry, we're going to probably be pretty desperate. But more than ever, with the assault on our minds and bodies 
from all the different GMOs, the pesticides, the energy stuff that's all around us, those towers, those particles, those strange clouds, what's in your water. We did a video on uh, EE Arts, and this is also going on EE Arts, and I hope you guys will read it. It's not getting much uh, airplay, but then again, they don't want you understanding things like Qigong. They don't want you understanding things like natural alternative healing. You're taking major tools and their warfare away from them. If you know how to heal yourself with herbs, if you know how to work the energy of the body to benefit yourself. And so Cindy was channeling this particular 300-year-old Qigong master. And really what he ate in a day probably didn't even equate to a few hundred calories. And science would say there's no way he could keep living, but he did. But he did. And in this one, we were talking also about a yogi who was watched twice for three weeks. He didn't eat or drink. He shouldn't be alive, but he was. And actually, he was in better shape than most people in his 70s. He didn't drink anything for three weeks. Science says that you would die if that's the case. But science is wrong. Now, the average person eating Twinkies and McDonald's, yeah, you might die. Because your body is just so toxic and poisoned anyway. But we have to learn how to just take what's out there by Mother Nature, especially when everything is going to get to be so expensive that really what's going to happen is they know people are going to come on their hands and knees and just look for their hands out. Because, yes, Uncle Sam, Big Brother, They'll take care of you as long as you comply. And you're going to have to comply in areas that you might not want to comply. In. Or you might get desperate enough that you'll comply even though you know it wasn't really the right thing to do for you or for your family. I know. They're going to put so many people in a really um, kind of a peculiar situation. But if we start to prepare now, if we do what we can do now... That's really going to go a long ways in, in what, the, what they're trying to do to us. So just do what you can. I know a lot of us don't have a lot of room. We don't, we don't have the ability to make our, make our gardens, you know, f able to free or feed all of us. But we can do something. Absolutely. And growing stuff in old pots and pans and all sorts of things i've seen our our good friend david in uk doing that he has stuff in cracked fish bowls in aquariums that other people threw out he's turned them into you know plant growing miracles and they're everywhere <laughs> in his house but hey you wouldn't think it but he could feed himself and and get by just fine Herbs are the building blocks for tasty, delicious meals. Again, think in terms of nutrition and not necessarily calories. Nutrition. Uh, so many people in our modern society, in the standard American sad diet, have plenty of calories. In fact, you know, half the nation is obese. And yet, at the same time, the majority of people are nutritionally deficient. Just because you eat a lot doesn't mean you're getting all your nutritional needs. And the things that are the most nutrient-dense tend to be the fruits and the veggies. And here again, the herbs can be used to heal. They could be used for so many things, from plants that cure headaches to ones that calm nerves. Herbs are a ready-made medicine cabinet provided by Mother Nature that you can grow in the smallest space, even if you don't have an outdoor garden. So here's, here's some. Oregano. We have a ton of it. It's growing like crazy in the back. And it is part of the mint family. As you know, this has powerful antiseptic pr properties. Can also use it to treat a number of stomach issues. And it's also anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a very, very good plant. And it's not hard to grow at all. And then there's a chamomile. Chamomile. Very, very, very good for us, and it looks really pretty too. But um, it says just like oregano, chamomile has anti-inflammatory properties, and that's really what we're up against these days. It can help things with your skin and treat a variety of ailments from eczema to stomach issues and sleep. And chamomile smells amazing. You know, I had I had a 
chamomile patch on one of my gardens and when I go out in the deck it was just like the smell of the flowers would just hit me and they'd put me in just this state of peace. Peppermint, we have a lot of that and peppermint grows easy. We put in a few peppermint, like four peppermint plants last year and now we have a you guys have probably seen it. Uh, you know, I don't know, six by eight square of it, something mm -hmm. like that that's knee high. Yeah, and I do have to trim it back because it is invasive, but boy, is it useful. And you know what it did? It drove so many of the bugs away. Yeah. So many of the bugs. Last year, we were getting eaten alive working on the garden, and I don't think we have, I don't know, 10, 20 percent of the bugs we did last year. And, of course, you could use it in tea. It's great for your stomachs. Um, it It's really good, too to inhale it like if you could make it into an essential oil inhale that up it just clears your sinuses right out mm -hmm. and and also think about the pain killing properties this is a very powerful powerful pain killer and even things like uh, you've heard of pepto-bismol well that helps with pain and it it helps your tummy so you can just take in the peppermint and take care of it that way and we have bay leaf as well um we we have a big jar of that up on this shelf it's useful and versatile and it can be used for treating many element uh, ailments i should say from joint pain to skin issues again antibacterial antifungal rosemary love rosemary mm -hmm. that's a favorite one and again rosemary is antimicrobial anti-inflammatory see so many of these have those two properties which are so so key and you know when the and I'll, I'll tell you guys when the computer was turned off i was reading about this poor 36 year old perfectly healthy housewife perfectly healthy until she got something done she got the ouchie because probably because the work was telling her she had to go get the ouchie and she died and so what did the autopsy show massive inflammation throughout the body and that's why she died mm -hmm. and it was probably again because of the ouchie if you know what we mean yeah yeah i mean that's just so unfortunate and just really really wrong on every level and some research suggests that rosemary can actually help with some memory issues now garlic will not only keep the vampires away it's a blood purifier mm -hmm. absolutely it's an immune system booster can help to regulate bodily functions like blood pressure mm -hmm. as well great for parasites and love me some dill in a tartar sauce. Mm, good stuff. Yes, absolutely. And dill can be also help with digestive issues. It's actually related to the carrots. I didn't know that. Savory as well. And this is a lesser known herb, but we do have some savory as well. I like to add it um, mostly to stuff that's a little bit more like French cuisine. Mm -hmm. um, it does pair well with thyme and uh, some other herbs like marjoram. You could use it to soothe the throat and other ailments as well with the digestive tract. And then we have bergamot, very, very distinctive. And Native Americans utilized it for a cure for the common cold. And it also attracts bees and hummingbirds. Then we have mm -hmm. thyme and milder than some of the other medicinal herbs. Thyme, thyme has a real earthy smell, a real earthy flavor to it um i just i love making soup which is rosemary and thyme and a little bay leaf mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very good stuff and this can definitely also ward off insects and has more antibacterial properties and ginger is a rhizome when you think about the power of rhizomes which we just ordered some oh gosh it was that purple flower that cindy was getting the impression uh from in the video about the 300 year old qigong master uh, he was showing her this purple flower that he used to uh, use the root. The root is, again, a rhizome like ginger and, and also like turmeric. You know, they're rhizomes. And ginger is fabulous, of course, for stomach ailments as well. It's good for nausea. Um, it's just, it, it's invaluable. Mm -hmm. You know, we have about 10 pounds of dried ginger, and we always get fresh ginger, too. And Cindy always... Um, makes capsules of it as well so we take it daily even if we are taking it in a shake too right it, it, you just can't go wrong with it nope and basil is the king of herbs i love basil with tomatoes fresh mozzarella 
a good balsamic vinegar and some fresh olive oil, some pink Himalayan sea salt. For me, that's that's dinner a lot mm -hmm. of times. Um, basil's wonderful and uh, could also help with stomach issues as well. Lavender, and this is the one thing that surprised me last year because I've had lavender before. I haven't had it here. And I've had it come back year after year, but it, it didn't come back here. Um, but again, another antiseptic. It also, in case you don't know, definitely attracts the fairy folk. Mm, and we love the fairy folk. And it's beautiful and it smells wonderful. Parsley can be used as a diuretic, also used to treat skin conditions um, from skin lesions to cancer. Sage, sage uh, as well. This is uh, a very valuable one. We sage all the time uh, as a regular occurrence. And sage, um, when we talk about smudging sage, it will drive away uh, all sorts of entities. They, they just have to leave when you sage. And if you do it, especially using an intention, maybe calling on the archangels or you know, some other benevolent being to, to aid you in clearing out negative energies. It's wonderful, but it's also great in food. Again, mm -hmm. uh, people use it with poultry. I also use it in just like a veggie soup. Um, but also, it's good for scratchy, tender, sore throats. Fenugreek. Fenugreek as well. That you will see it in some Indian cooking. Uh, it does have promise in regulating blood sugar. They also uh, use it in imitation vanilla, but I buy the real natural yeah. stuff too. We never buy imitation anything. No, we don't. You know, there was a lady in front of me um, in the grocery store, and she was also probably in her 80s. And um, she asked the lady behind her, oh, sweetie, can you, can you reach over and get me a Diet Coke? And I wanted to just lecture her on the dangers of diet soft drinks but i thought i don't want to be that pain in, in the butt in the line you know at the food store that's lecturing everybody on stuff well it's difficult because once you become aware you know how poisonous that is to the body so it's hard to not say things sometimes but you got it <laughs> yeah and plus like i used to always tell my mom and she'd say well you know i've lived this long and uh, you know I've, I've done okay already mm -hmm. she would yep yeah that's just the way she was so this one we had borage and medicinal uses can help regulate cortisol levels. Fennel, distinctive. Um, most definitely pairs well with fish again. It's got an anise-like flavor, kind of like a licorice type thing. Highly nutritious. It can regulate blood pressure, improve digest digestion as well. Tarragon, uh, tarragon, that goes well with savory as well. Uh, I'll combine those two sometimes in an omelet. And um, it's got a nice, delicate, slightly licorice taste to it. Can stimulate appetite and treat problems with digestion. Then echinacea is a powerhouse, as you guys probably know. Uh, it can reduce internal infections. An injection could help even treat hemorrhoids. And you can also use it to heal and clean sores and skin inflammation. Now... They say there's not a lot of evidence that it helps with colds, but, I mean, gosh, it's been used since time immemorial. Fever few. Given the name, shouldn't surprise you. It's good for treating fevers. Can also help with migraines, inflammation, menstrual clamps. <laughs> clamps. <laughs> oh, that sounds painful. And to relieve gas and bloating. That could be painful, too. Lemon balm. This is another one that seems to get the insects to... Some of the insects are annoying ones to take off and, and leave. But um, it's the same thing with lemongrass. That can also drive away. And lemongrass is great in like Thai cooking. And so this one also uh, will attract honeybees. Can help with perhaps with benign heart palpitations and help on the skin as well with cold sores. St. John's Wort's another powerhouse. Can help to uh, relieve depressive disorders, including bipolar, and impacts serotonin levels. Nettles, and Rosemary was always saying, nettles, nettles, nettles. They're delicious in soup, salads, and pasta. Marvelous on pizza or in warm grain salad. You know, basically it's kind of a weed that can grow kind of anywhere. It can also help with anemia, gout, skin disorders, Urinary issues, arthritis, joint pain, kidney stones, burdock. 
and it does wonders for the skin, helps with eczema and psoriasis as well, and wormwood. Wormwood's a big one too for antiparasitic, antibacterial, can help lower fevers, ease depression. And then we have motherwort, and this is a member of the mint family, can help with cardiovascular issues like heart failure, irregular heartbeat, can also alleviate menstrual pain, can bring on menstruation, and ease symptoms of menopause. Catnip. Not only do cats like it, but it can also calm nerves and also the stomach. Can use it to ease pa painful menstrual uh, cramps. It can also help with headaches and fevers. So that is those. And by the way, there's a list here of 20 edible flowers that you could grow in your garden. And maybe the neighbors are climbing over your fences. They're, they're snatching your pomegranates. They're taking your pears in the middle of the night because things have gotten that bad. But they might not realize they could be eating these flowers. Yes, and the flowers are quite magical because really the petals from the flowers that get the sun, those have different effects on the body. So flowers are very, very, actually very healthful, very good for you to learn about. And honestly, I, I really don't know a heck of a lot about flowers. So I will share with you these. Begonias, bee balm, and I do know um, gardeners that would definitely be doing bee balm to draw, to draw the bees in. Um, borage, we were talking about that before. Calendula. Chamomile, we had that there before. Now that one I knew you could. Obviously chives. Chrysanthemums. Now that's not one I thought that you could eat, but okay. Daylily. Elderflower. Sambucus, yes. And I love elderberry. We drink elderberry tea all the time. And geranium. Scented leaf geranium. Hibiscus is another favorite. We combine that with the elderberry. And so... That is probably the thing we I per personally drink more than any other single thing mm -hmm. is hibiscus elderberry uh, tea. Lavender, as we were talking about, lilac as well. Marigolds. And, you know, those are good, too, for driving the bugs away, aren't they not? Apple blossoms, so pretty. Nasturtium. Anis hyssop. Rose, most definitely rose water is something that you'll see in some Indian cooking, most notably desserts. Squash blossom. Violet. And so there is your list of that. So I did want to share with you guys, I had mentioned this before, this is Jake Mace. And he was really the inspiration for me Um when he was living in Arizona because he was living on one third of an acre and on that third of an acre he had over 200 fruit trees his his yard was just amazing over 20 raised bed gardens 200 fruit trees he could feed quite a large family easily might be able to feed the neighborhood and he was also a, a vegan and so that that's his front front yard as you can see here every single thing he planted is edible and with a purpose edible with a purpose whether it's medicinal or or just simply calories and food nourishment now see this is a structure that you got tied into the side of the house you could tie something like this into the side of an outbuilding or your garage and, and be growing stuff along the side right there. There's always ways for those that are challenged with space. As you can see, a magnificent garden in Phoenix, Arizona. And this is a video of his final garden tour as he ended up moving to Canada. So I just wanted to share it. I'll share the link with you guys. Um, it's just amazing what he put together here and we can do it we can all do it to a degree and you know maybe you're renting maybe you're in a, a high rise there's still things we can do to at least get ourselves some nutrition and some ability to help ourselves when we might not be feeling 100 percent. yes and definitely help others too absolutely and share your knowledge share these videos too 
So thanks for the Patreons. We couldn't do it without you guys and those that are supporting us over on Ko-Fi where you could do a one-time support for the channel or you could do monthly and it goes in $5 coffee increments as you see. And do check out Medicinal Foods. Link on top of every video. Make sure to use coupon code EEA. Get you a discount. They have tons of good stuff here too that can also boost your immune system, help you detox or... If you just got to have something that's a little bit naughty, like chocolate macadamia nuts, at least it's not going to be too bad for you. Right. God bless and namaste. Namaste.